The economic crisis which has engulfed Greece could be the tip of the iceberg, according to French economist, writer and thinker Jacques Attali. The former chief of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development has long advocated a single tax and fiscal policy within the Eurozone and warns failure to do so could be catastrophic. In his latest book, he asks whether we'll all be ruined in 10 years. He's also dismissive of this week's 16-nation Eurogroup summit. This summit comes far too late. If two or three weeks ago he had said we'll put 40 billion on the table, that would have been enough, but that didn't happen. There was hesitation. Then we said we'd do it, which is the worst case scenario, to say no and then say yes. Secondly, the mechanism which is in place is not credible. The figures mentioned are very high, but the austerity measures imposed on the Greeks are unsustainable. And on top of that, we're not asking them to make cuts to their defence budget, despite the fact that's one of their biggest expenditures. Therefore, the markets are going to ask what will happen in other countries. They will be concerned and will want to be sure that other states are taking this seriously, from Portugal to Spain, Italy and England, because Great Britain is also in a very difficult position. As a result, we are likely to see other speculative attacks. Well, perhaps not attacks, but certainly clarifications of how genuinely serious states are, although I don't think they are serious. Because today, European governments are not making the only decision which would be imposed. That's to say, creating European Treasury bonds, an instrument which could allow Europe to borrow in its own name. So if I understand, you're saying that to move forward from a crisis of this magnitude, the only solution is to consolidate truly European reaction mechanisms. Of course, it's not the solution per se, because there is no other solution except to reduce the debt. We have to avoid a catastrophe, and to avoid a catastrophe, we need to borrow credibly. And the only player who could borrow in a credible way is the European Union. But we're a long way from a decision of this scale. For the past two years, in any case, we've done nothing. We're paying lip service to G20, which achieves nothing. We announce things which are never put in place. We are so scared to make the smallest decision that nothing gets done. And meanwhile, the spiral continues. The crisis started out being a small American subprime crisis, which should have cost $10 billion. But we didn't do anything, and it became a global banking crisis, which could have cost $500 billion. But but we did nothing except passing it on to the taxpayers. It has become a national debt crisis which now totals between seven and eight trillion dollars. Banks are continuing to speculate exactly as they did before. Immoral actions are still going on. Nothing has changed. Except that now we've discovered it's evolved from a crisis within private finance to a crisis of public finance. No, we haven't just discovered that. Along with many others, I have been warning for three years that private debt would be passed on to the public. From the moment of the Lehman crisis, we chose to transfer private debt to public debt, and because we chose to do so, we accepted to finance all the losses of the various banks. Apart from Lehman, none were allowed to collapse. Thus, we accepted that the taxpayers of tomorrow should pay, in addition to other debts, those stemming from these mistakes. One of the many reasons for hesitation in the past three months was the role of the International Monetary Fund. Germany was reluctant for Europe to assume sole responsibility for the Greek bailout plan. Why did you say in a recent article that the, the decision to call upon the IMF was dishonourable? In the words of Churchill, you had the choice between war and dishonour. You chose dishonour and you will have war. Unfortunately, this applies today. We choose dishonour because although the IMF is a respectable institution, it is not a European structure. Therefore, we have basically handed over control of European affairs to the US and other non-Europeans. As a result, we have chosen a strategy which will destroy our European identity. Besides, Europe will have to carry the bulk of the burden because, at any rate, it's the Europeans who will have to pay the price for this crisis. Could all of this have happened because of a fundamental flaw in the original European structure? For instance, the euro has never been backed up by a common European policy, neither fiscal nor economic. Do we really have the structure needed to get out of this crisis? I said ten years ago that the euro would disappear if we were not capable of implementing a common European policy. At the same time, it's true that we have always progressed like that in Europe. 
We created the single market because the common market wasn't enough on its own. We created the single currency because the single market wasn't enough, and each time crises have preceded these evolutions. Today we see that the single currency cannot continue to exist without a common fiscal and economic policy. It's not possible. So, will we have the courage to do it? We will see. But for the moment, we are faced with politicians who are from the 20th century who are a century behind. Is there anyone among the European leaders who seems to understand this reality? Unfortunately, the only person who seems to take it seriously and understand the situation is European Central Bank President Jean-Claude Trichet, but he's not a politician. He's the only one in Europe, as far as I know, as well as perhaps Jean-Claude Juncker, who as president of the Eurogroup is well aware of the end game. They understand that much greater integration is needed. So where do you think we're heading? I'm afraid we're heading towards the worst-case scenario, the erosion of Europe. The only question remains whether those politicians who have not had the courage to make decisions during a period of calm will now make decisions during the storm. So you're saying the storm's only just getting started? Of course, the crisis is only just beginning. Everyone who has been saying for months that the crisis is finished, we are over the worst of it, is talking rubbish. Because national debt is increasing, because the the recession is here. Of course, there isn't a crisis in China, in India, in Asia or elsewhere. But the crisis is here in Europe. The crisis is in the US, in Japan. All those so-called rich countries are tired. They choose to live on credit. They have to pay. What are the consequences for Europe if Europe comes out of this crisis? It seems it'll be weaker than ever. First of all, it's not finished. On the contrary, it could be the moment, as we saw in the crisis of 92-93 or the crisis in Europe in the early 80s. This could be the moment to become stronger, to do better. I have not given up hope that Europe will understand that today. The only way forward is to make Europe stronger and not weaker. At the 24th hour? Hopefully not the 25th hour, as a great Romanian writer said. Portugal? Is there an imminent threat there? And how about Spain? Yes, of course, the markets will show whether the same politicians that have not done their jobs in time with regards to Greece are going to do their jobs with regards to Portugal. So we will see the credit default of Portugal increase, then that of Spain, then that of Great Britain, and then we will see what the governments will do. The worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is without doubt what we will have to do in order to wake up the political classes.